again for joining us. We're back, segment three of four with Karma Truchanich. I didn't write Proposition 215. I didn't write the MMP, the Medical Marijuana Program Act, the Compassionate Use uh, Ordinance or uh, uh, Law 215. I didn't write that. But, you know, I, I, I went to eighth grade and I, I learned how to read. And I did pretty good on those, those comprehension tests. And I could read the law. And, it, and the law in California says you can't sell it. As much as I may want to sell marijuana and I want you to be able to sell marijuana, the law is not written for you to be able to sell it. The council wouldn't believe me. I told them that's the law. They wouldn't believe me. They kept saying they wanted to have these dispensaries. Can't have them. The law does not provide for the sale of marijuana. 11359 and 11360 of the Health and Safety Code says sale of marijuana is a straight felony. Nothing in the MMP or in the, in the uh, Compassionate Use Act changed that law. It's still there. And so basically, I had to go to court. I teed up one case, the hemp factory. I had 30 or 40 I could have brought at one time. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to take one case and we're going to bring that, tee up that one case, the most egregious case we have, and let's bring it over to the Ritz and Receiver Court, Judge Chalfont, and let's get a judicial ruling, an interpretation of what the law is. Now, in addition to that, the judge went one step further because we asked him to, and that is to determine that medical marijuana is like any other medicine. It has to comply with the Sherman Law. The Sherman Law is basically the FDA law under federal law. Medical marijuana, I, had, I sent out five cops to buy marijuana all over the city. I took the samples, not to the DEA, I drove down in Irvine to the FDA lab. And I took five samples of marijuana to the lab director and I said, can you tell me what the, what's in this stuff? All right? I was blown away when I got the results back because what had happened is I saw on TV that, that the DEA and the Santa Barbara sheriffs had busted the guy up in, the, in Santa Barbara. And I saw this can and it looked like a pesticide can. So I thought they were spraying the marijuana with, with pesticides to keep the bugs off it. You know, like you would around your garden. Lo and behold, I got the samples back. They didn't have any marijuana, uh, any pesticide on it. They had pesticide in it. In it, not on it, in it. Now that's a big piece of circumstantial evidence, ladies and gentlemen, that's a very big piece of circumstantial evidence because now you know that the ground that it was grown upon was saturated with an insecticide because the plant had to absorb it as it was growing. So now you want to find out another piece of circumstantial evidence. What type of insecticide was it? One insecticide that we found, we found, we found one insecticide common through all the samples, okay? But we found traces in other in, uh, plants of chloridane. Chloridane is a, is a, uh, has been banned in the United States as a known birth defect causer and carcinogen for over 28 years. That means you can't buy it. You've, you possess chloridane, and you're committing a felony. But we found bifenthrin in these samples. In some levels, 200 to 300 times the ingestible allowable limit for a, a pesticide on an herb or in an herb. That means, for example, if you went and bought parsley at the, at the at A1 market down here uh, and, and you tested it and had over 0.05 of, a, of, a, of a parts per billion of, of this pesticide in it, they couldn't sell it to you because it had too much, because that pesticide could cause cancer. Well, we found two to 300, 400, one sample was 1,800 times higher than the adjustable allowable limit inside the plant of bifenthrin. Well, what type of bug does bifenthrin kill? Well, it kills two types of bugs, generally. It kills subterranean termites. Well, if you are growing marijuana, why do you need to kill subterranean termites? You don't, okay? So that wasn't the bug in question. What's the other bug? Fire ants, red fire ants, indigenous to South America and Mexico. We don't have any fire ants in California, but yet this marijuana had bifenthrin in it that used to kill that stuff. So it leads you to believe that it was being imported here from Mexico and sold lawfully in our dispensaries throughout LA. We're providing the marketplace for the cartels to dispense their goods. To me, that's troubling. You know, in my little Yugoslavian pea brain, that is troubling, okay? <laughs> I don't want that stuff 
the, the violence in Mexico coming over here. And so we need to stop that importation. Now, how do I know even more, more circumstantial evidence? Because on December 18th, let me give you an example. On December 18th of last year, there was a guy driving up I-15 in Riverside. A sheriff uh, um, car was following this truck. The sheriff car moved into the number four lane, the truck was in the third lane, and the truck made a change, a lane change without signaling, and damn near ran the sheriff off the road. Now, that's gonna get you no points with the sheriff department. They're gonna pull you over, and that's exactly what the sheriff did. They pulled this guy over, all right? But when you write a tr uh, ticket to an 18-wheeler, it's a misdemeanor, and you gotta write a lot of paper, and this guy was on, a, he's, a, he's a patrol cop, he's not a, he's not a motor cop, so he was just gonna yell at the guy and let him go. He was a canine unit. He uh, got up there, yelled at the guy, told the guy to take off, went back to his car, got his dog, walked out to the side of the, the freeway to let his dog go to the bathroom, and the dog lit up. They opened up the back of the trailer, and guess what they found? 14, uh, 12 tons of marijuana. 12 tons of marijuana with a street value of $39 million. Now, you know what the interesting part of this thing was? Was when they, when they, when they interviewed this guy, you know what he said? It was the second load of the week. 40-foot van full of marijuana, twice in one week, we caught one of the two loads. There's big money in this. There's big money, and there's a push to, now for the legalization of marijuana, and this, this is a societal thing that, you, that we're gonna have to deal with in San Pedro. So, remember, there's big money, and look at who's selling you the issues before you make your decision on that. More from Los Angeles City Attorney Carmen Trutanich right after this.